as you can probably see I have my mechanical parts here back from the cleaning process they were cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner in the wax and grease remover and then cleaned in the, in the ultrasonic cleaner with hot water and domestic detergent in this case Handy Andy which is a general household cleaner and now they're all clean and shiny and it means that uh, I can inspect things like critical parts like the shutter cocking rack because they're nice and clean and I can actually see what state the teeth are in as it happens in this case that rack's perfect there's nothing wrong with that at all so we haven't got any serious mechanical problem there at all that's good the film advance shaft here is nice and clean all that sticky grease has gone out of its return spring and I can check this to make sure that the end piece here the cam on the bottom is actually riveted firmly to the shaft if it's not and that can certainly be the case if the camera has been dropped if the camera is dropped and the film advance lever hits the ground it'll stress that riveted point there you see in the center and it may leave this loose if it rattles that will affect the point at which the release lever moves from one side of the cam to the other side of the cam to allow you to uh, the, allow the film advance lever to return to the park position and we don't want that so these parts are all clean and I will just sort them out so that I've got them ready to assemble and that'll speed up the, re, the reassembly process well here I have the cleaned parts sorted out into their groups so that I can pretty much move straight from one container to the next assembling the camera as I go if you start in the right place you don't have to backtrack and undo something to put something else in that you should have gone in first okay ready to assemble the camera body now so we start at the beginning and typically I start with the front standard and fit the shutter release component to the front standard we in shot here yeah, just about this fits on here there are two screws that hold this together the larger of the two goes at the top generally the smaller of the two goes at the bottom not that one this one on the earliest cameras there were just two small heads that's that it's return spring it fits on here and the earliest cameras lacked that return spring and that should move nice and freely typically I lubricate that lightly with a little bit of graphite powder and I'll do that just by dropping a bit of graphite powder into those slots working it repeatedly knock that off back into the container blow away any excess and that's that the advantage of using graphite uh, powder to lubricate that rather than anything liquid like uh, graphite grease or similar is that it, it's not going to stick things if you get anything that's got any viscosity it'll stick between the large flat surfaces like the body here in this piece and it wouldn't move freely that's that part here we've got the shroud and these two pieces are held together one slides into the other and then there are two buttons 
it hold it uh, lock the thing into place. So it's taking some synthetic grease. Run it round in here where the buttons are going to go, top and bottom. It just needs a quick wipe. Assemble the springs into the buttons, and the springs go into the hole on the button. They do not go over the post of the button. You put the spring over the post, you're going to have a bad day. The buttons are interchangeable. You can put either one at the top or the bottom. It doesn't make any difference. Just put that into place, compress it. I'm holding it compressed with my fingers while I get the other one in place. I've got both of them held compressed and I can slide the lens standard into the shroud. There we have it. It just pops into place and locks there. That's good. So for lubrication front standard is running on these rails, top and bottom. You can often see damage on them, which has been caused when the camera has been dropped or thumped. In this case I can see a slight notch in it just there, which means that the front must have been back in something like that position and it's had a, had a thump. That's not uncommon and there's not an awful lot you can do about it. So those two spots need to be lubricated and in the center where the buttons, where the release buttons run, normally apply a little bit of synthetic grease there too because those buttons are pushing against that surface. Check that the action is smooth, that feels good. Their shutter release component, they've got this piece here. Now that, is, that can be lifted into position with the front extended like this. You can tuck that piece in there. Then can close the front up slightly. That piece is trapped in there now, it can't fall out which is important because otherwise it would fall out and then you've got to take all things to bits again. The camera body to prepare this. We start with the transfer shaft and I lubricate that pinion on the back of it with a bit of synthetic grease. That drops into the body and, and there's a hole there at the back you can see where it Fits, fits into there. There's a bracket that holds that in position. Here's our bracket and that's held in place with a single round headed screw unlike anything else on the camera. Very short So I'll run that in, just get that started. Now I want to set the distance. That The hole that that screw runs through is slightly oversized in the body. You can move that bracket backwards or forwards in that amount of slop. It's important that that spacing is correct, otherwise you will get premature wear on your shutter cocking rack. So I've got to find the feeler gauges. Right, here's our shutter cocking rack. I'll drop that into position. Now I found from experience that four thousandths of an inch, what's that? 0 0.102, 0 0.102 millimetre is a good amount of clearance to allow there. If I can find the right screwdriver. And I'll slacken that screw off, push it back towards the back of the camera and check that that moves smoothly and it's not moving smoothly. Check that it's square. It wasn't square. Feels a bit tight 
I think I've need, haven't got enough clearance there. No, I haven't. I can't fit that feeler gauge down there. So I'll just slacken that screw off slightly. Try again. That feels nice. That's running nice and smoothly. Now I normally lock the position of that screw head there with a little touch of uh, lacquer. It would be better to lock the position of the arm down here at the bottom but you can't really get at that and if you apply too much lacquer there you would end up with grief because you wouldn't be able to slide this front section into place. Well I've got some clear lacquer here, I'll use that because the red lacquer I normally use, I can see it's hardened up a little bit in the bottom. That's it, let's put a touch there. Normally, if you're using lacquer to lock something, to stop it from coming loose, normally you use a nice high contrast colour like this, so anyone coming along behind you can see that you've used that, and so they'll know that it's there, and so they can take appropriate measures to deal with it which might mean dissolve putting a drop of acetone on there before they uh, try and undo the screw. Right, so our front section can go back into the camera body now. It just slides in over the top of that shaft. If we can get the shaft to line up with correctly with the hole. There we go. Why is that not pressing down firmly into position? I just need to wriggle it, here we go, just needed a bit of wriggling. So two screws at the top, two screws at the bottom. The two screws at the top are typically the two ugliest clean countersunk head screws with big heads. And they're ugly because the slots are usually somewhat abused because They've been done up very tight and they were usually a fight to undo. At the bottom of the camera, the same sorts of screws. These ones are identifiable because not only are they ugly for the same reason, they are usually covered in adhesive or corrosion or both, as in this case. There, those are all in place now, those four screws, and so I can tighten them up. The shutter release shaft here should be slid in at this stage, because otherwise if you pull the front out, you might end up with the little coupling piece in there falling out of position and causing you grief. So I'm just rubbing some molybdenum paste on this, slide that into position. You can see how that, that acts. Good, so that means now if I pull the front out, that little bracket can't fall out because it's trapped because this thing passes through it. That's all good. and move on to the next stage. The task I normally do next is assemble the focus scale, the focus uh, helical, and get that all in position and get the focus scale ring and so forth in place. So starting here, well here's our mount for the focus, I'll put that into the body and that's held in place with four screws They are nickel plated, rounded heads, they are about 6 millimeters long. This focus mount only goes in one way up, it's got a notch in the body here which has to go at the top. 
and that's where the coupling arm for the rangefinder runs through that spot. Checking I've got that all the screws in position and then I can tighten them up. Let's just pull that front out proud so I can see where it is. The focus mount. Right, so screw these two components together. Now I'm looking at my alignment marks that I've got here. Two at this side and one at that side. My inner is well below the surface there, so I need to get that to start another notch or two earlier. Multi-start threads are always fun. Where am I? Now I've gone one, at least one notch too far because the front, the inner part is now sticking out. So I will just roll that back the other way. See, here we go. Oh, we need another one. Here we go. No, I've gone too far now. That's it. So I've got those, so my alignment marks, my double alignment mark here and my single alignment mark there are aligned correctly when the front face of the inner and outer helical are level with each other. So I know that that's the correct position. Now running this through my fingers I can feel that there's a little bit of roughness there. It's not bad. I'm just going to rub that down by putting a bit of naphtha on the inner helical there and just working this backwards and forwards. And most likely that roughness is a patch of oxidation or something of that nature. And they'll rub to get rubbing them together like that with a bit of uh, naphtha basically just polishes it away. And that's it I think. Now looking at this um, focus helical here I can see there's a colour change towards the front edge. This is a, obviously a brass colour and it's sort of a more of a brown colour there which suggests that there was some sort of uh, corrosion happening at that front front edge. Possibly as the result of something unfortunate in the way of lubricant. That's nice and smooth now. And I can lubricate this and put it in place. Now what I, what I use for uh, lubricating this is this uh, Micro Lube Roll Helimax XP Optical and Instrument Helicoid Grease. It's white, probably lithium based I would imagine. It's a uh, very smooth in consistency like some sort of magic woman's face cream. I usually put a little patch in about half a dozen places around the helical like that and work it backwards and forwards. You do not want to completely clog up the threads otherwise it'll become too stiff. That feels good. So some around the outside where it's going to run in the mount and there's two slots top and bottom here and here where it runs on those guide posts now my double scribe marks were to the bottom um, so I know which way up that goes back in the camera and I'll check the action and it's smooth The retaining ring should have a smear of grease on it too, but it doesn't need that much. I'm just trying to get some off this stick. Normally I just run the 
my toothpick of grease around the inside edge like that. It needs very little at all. And that's enough. This only goes on in one position. It's got a notch in it which matches the notch up in the mount. And it's held in place with four small countersunk head screws. When putting the, when screwing this down, it's always worth making sure that the inner helical is out forward of the outer helical. Otherwise you'll be trying to uh, wed, jam things back where it doesn't want to go. If it's so get these four screws positioned, get them started. Once they're all started, tighten them down. Check the action of the helical again. It's smooth. If four screws go through here and hold the bellows to the back of the front standard, so they need to be in place. So normally I collapse the front like that, so that the front standard is back against the bellows. Feed in my four screws. And then tighten them up. They should find the holes in the bellows quickly. It's just a case of doing them up evenly. Making sure they're firm, don't go crazy. If you over tighten them, you'll snap those screws, they're quite small. Right, so I pull the front out, the bellows are now firmly attached. Next, our focus scale ring. Fortunately, I've made alignment marks top and bottom there so I can get that back in exactly the right position. If I'd been foolish enough not to have done that, but I knew roughly where it was going to go, you can usually tell by the screw heads will have left a little mark in that um, ring there and you can see where it should have been. But the alignment marks that I've made are far clearer than that. So we'll get these four screws in. There are four screws hold this and there are two similar screws that hold the other ring in, the, the ring that couples to the rangefinder. Now they look much the same but those two screws are slightly smaller. So the four larger screws go here. And these just need to be nipped up. Do not over tighten them. If you over tighten them all you'll achieve is that you will distort the outer helical and as a result it will not run smoothly. That's good. I want to get my piece here in the coupling piece for my rangefinder. Now this has been through the ultrasonic cleaner and it's completely devoid of any lubricant. So I need to let remedy that situation because this hinge point here is just a rivet. It's quite tight and when it's got no lubrication at all it can get quite stiff. So what I do is I take a tiny drop of oil and I apply it with the tip of a toothpick just like that and then rotate that in It'll soon work its way in, that's it, that's all that's required. And that's the only oil I typically use on a camera. And this can go into position. That goes down in there. You can see at the top of the body here, that's where it couples to the screw that'll couple with the rangefinder. 
two small screws in here. I can see my video camera is shouting loudly that its battery is just about flat. So this is a race against time. I may get the three screws in before the camera shuts down, or I may not. Those two screws in place and done up tight. This guide screw for the rangefinder goes in there. And taking my synthetic grease, which I've managed to just hide somewhere, here we go. I put a touch of that in that track, front or rear of that thing, and you can see as I move the focus scale ring, you'll see that that screw moves backwards and forwards. When I collapse the front of the camera, that screw follows the track and tucks back away inside the body. Right, I'll better change this battery. <laughs>